Arrêtez au point, s'il vous plaît. Mr. Funny. Yes, monsieur. Could I speak to you for a moment? Well, I've been studying painting with you for some time now. Do you think it's worth my while to go on? Why do you ask? Well, I feel there's no sense in my staying here unless I have talent. If you are not certain about your talent, why did you stay until now? Because all this is so, so beautiful to me. In my youth, it was all so beautiful to me. But now, it is the city of lost illusions. Is your studio very far? No, not very. Let us go there. You will show me what you have done. Yes. Have you any money? A little. Not enough to live on. Then I must tell you, there is no talent here, merely industry and intelligence. You will never be anything but mediocre. And it is very cruel to discover one's mediocrity only when it is too late. I know. Do you see that? That name does not belong there. It belongs somewhere else. Take your courage in both your hands and make something of your life. Have you anything in mind? Well, you see, um, I have my limitations. My father was a doctor. I've always been interested in medicine. And if one can't be great, at least one can be of, of some use to people. It's what we call a winter cough. A great many middle-aged women have it. Well, I never. That's a nice thing to say to a lady. No one's ever called me middle-aged before. Oh, it's time you got used to it. All the same, you're a nice one, dearie. Unfortunately, I can't say the same for you. Good day, madam. That'll be all now. The rest you come back tomorrow. Uh, get him ready. All right, sir. Are you the boy's father? Yes, sir. What's the matter with you now? You see well enough what the matter is. The boy has a club foot. Oh, uh... Carrie, you better take this case. It's a subject you ought to know something about. It's only for the looks of the thing, you know. I don't find it no trouble. Don't you? That's wonderful. I always did. Oh, that's because you let them go on at you. You seem to be a little slow, Carrie. I think I'll have to instruct the class. There are many varieties of club feet. This is one of the less interesting. Yours would probably prove more interesting. You have Telepi's Aquinas, haven't you? Yes, I believe so. Don't mind taking off a sock, do you, Carrie? No, not at all. Keeps his feet nice and clean, doesn't he? 
Hmm, yes, just as I thought. Telepes aquinas. Malformation requiring you to walk on the outside of the foot. A very interesting example, I must say. Do you mind if I have a look? Congenital club foot. In simple language, a foot twisted inward. The cause of this twisting is not clear. Hereditary inference plays a part here, as pointed out by Dr. Little, who traces recurring deformity through four generations. Well, when you've quite finished. I say, old man, I like that. <laughs> French, isn't she? Yes, yeah, she was a model in Paris. You know, I can't for the life of me understand why you gave up painting. <laughs> I'd rather look at that all day long than at this. <laughs> Woman, you know. You can tell by the uh, pelvis. <laughs> yeah. I like them with a little more... Uh... <laughs> oh, there's life in the old girl yet. Don't inhale, dearie. <laughs> I say, I've got to be getting along. It's a little matter of a barmaid at the Crown and Anchor. And very nice, too. <laughs> Cheerio. <laughs> Funny fellow, isn't he? Oh. I say, Carrie. It must have been wonderful having that life in Paris. Well, it was. <laughs> and do you mean that you really knew all those fascinating women? Well, some of them. I see you're just the man I'm looking for. I wonder if you couldn't help me. In what way? Well, there's a girl, and I can't get anywhere with her. And you've been to Paris, <laughs> and all that. I'm sure you could say something that would give me a starter. I'd ask Griffiths, only he couldn't do it and remember whom he was doing it for. Oh, but you're just the man. You know, say something to make her laugh. <laughs> what? You don't believe it? You are too suspicious. <laughs> I say, she's marvelous, isn't she? No, she's anemic. You don't suppose she likes that bounder, do you? Of course. Now's your chance. Say something. Well, I see your friend's going. I don't know what you mean. I was referring to the nobleman with the sandy moustache. Has he left you for another? Some people would do better to mind their own business. Why? I have a very nice back. Am I on speaking terms with your back? Woman, you know. You can tell by the pelvis. And that calls himself a gentleman. I apologize. What for? I promised you something charming, and she's turned out to be ill-natured and contemptible. I'm sorry I let you in for it. Oh, that's all right. You don't suppose I care what an anemic little waitress says to me, do you? Well, I do. I must be going. Coming along. No, I, I think I'll have some more tea. Anything you want? Yes, if you don't mind, I'd like to talk to you. Um, filthy weather, isn't it? Makes no difference to me. I have to be here all day. Oh, don't talk like that. I only wanted to say something pleasant. Well, say it. You know, you have a lovely smile. You should use it more often. Now, don't go spoofing me. A girl that works hard all day like I do, don't have much reason to smile. Perhaps I could find a reason. Will you let me try? Well, I don't know whether I will or whether I won't. Well, I hope you'll decide you will.
Right so. be in a great hurry. Well, I, I've been waiting ten minutes. I didn't know you could draw. Didn't you? That meant to be me. Looks like you, doesn't it? Well, if you look at it that way, T. <laughs> you are a strange sort. I say, will, will you dine with me sometime? And we'll go to the theatre? I don't mind. W when will you come? I'm off Thursdays. All right, shall we say Thursday? Seven o'clock, Victoria Station. All right. I'll meet you, Victoria, in the second class waiting room. You're never coming. I like that. After keeping me waiting. I almost went home. I was in the second class waiting room. I thought you said you'd be there. Now I say, is it likely I'll sit in the second class when I could sit in the first? For a gentleman of brains, you don't use them, do you? <laughs> Perhaps not. Anyway, you're here, so it's all right, isn't it? You certainly do make a girl feel important to you. I love that music. Whenever I hear it, I think of you. How pale you are. How strange, how cold. You are going it. Do you always order champagne? No. Then why'd you do it now? I was hoping it would make you more friendly. Do you think it will? Well, there's one thing I can say for you. A gentleman in every sense of the word. May I see you again? I don't mind. It doesn't it make any difference to you? No. You don't take me out, someone else will. Won't you stay for a moment? No. Why not? Why? People would think I don't know what all.
I love that music. Whenever I hear it, I, I think of you. Whenever I hear it, I think of us. do with your time. <laughs> I, I should be studying. And why don't you? Well, I, I'd rather see you. Any of the girls notice you're waiting for me? I don't know. Why, what difference does it make? They all laugh at you, you know. Oh, do they? Why? They say you're in love with me. <laughs> May I call you Mildred? I don't mind. Look here. Don't say that anymore, will you? Why not? Well, well, tell me, I'll call you Mildred. And you call me Philip, will you? I think of it. I, um... Uh, I'm a little awkward at this, but... Will you kiss me goodnight? No. Oh, Mildred! Will you come to the theatre with me on Saturday? I don't mind. You're sure they're for Saturday? Certainly. My name is Miller. Emil Miller. We should know each other. Why? Well, we are both interested in the same thing. Thing? Uh, my dear young man, you are so, uh, so, uh, artistic. You, you should be more, <clears throat> like so. Thanks. Thanks very much. That's, uh, that's all right. Hip change? Uh, what, what time shall I see you? Oh, I forgot to tell you, Philip. I can't go. W why not? My aunt's ill. Oh. Well. What's the sense in that? You don't suppose I want to go by myself, do you? I only got them for your sake. Well, you needn't go on about it. on me. I always thought you was a gentleman in every sense of the word. Are you going out with Miller? No. Well, what if I am? I can go out with him if I want to, can't I? He's keeping you waiting, isn't he? Well, I'd rather wait for him than have you wait for me. Won't you change your mind? I'll get some more tickets and we'll... No. You keep looking for him the way I look for you. If you don't come out with me tonight, you'll never see me again. Good riddance to bad rubbish.
Sorry, old boy. How about a, a nice large beer? Huh? Wouldn't help. Well, what would? Mm -hmm. Mildred. Of course you don't like me. I I'm a cripple. No, Phil, it isn't that. Oh, yes, I felt it all along. Foolish. My, my hat, silly. You are clumsy. <sighs> You're off your nut. You don't know what you're doing. What sort of practice can you expect to have with a wife like that? I don't know. Let me ask you something. Why do you want to marry this girl? Because I'm so in love with her. Ah. That ring with the little design is very popular, sir. We sell a great many of them. They're 30 shillings. Thank you, sir. Philip, were you surprised by asking me to take me to dinner tonight? I was delighted. Were you? Yes. Yeah. Why? Oh, I don't know. I, you've been so sweet to me all day, and I've got something to ask you, and it makes it so much easier for me. It makes it easier for me, too. I have something to tell you. No, no, no. Let me tell you first. There it is. I want you to marry me. I'm so sorry, Philip. That's just what I was about to tell you. I shouldn't have waited so long. Fact is, I'm going to be married. Are you? To whom? A man I know. He earns very good money. Yes, I'm, I'm sure of it. Now, you won't go on about it, will you, Philip? All right. I'm getting on. I'm 24. It's time I settle down. This gentleman earns seven pounds a week and he's got good prospects. Well, this is goodbye. I, I hate to eat and run, Philip, but... Well, I have an engagement. I'm going to the theatre with the gentleman I'm going to marry.
seen her since? No. Well, London is the largest city in the world, and you know the cure for one woman. Another. <laughs> right ho. Nora, you don't read such junk, do you? No, I write it. What? That's how I earn my living. I didn't know. Successful? Very. I have an immense popularity amongst kitchen maids. They think me so refined. Let's not talk about that. Let's talk about us. Nora, you're not really fond of me, are you? <laughs> Clever boy, you ask such foolish questions. <laughs> oh, my dear, it never struck me that you could be. Pleased? Delighted. And so proud, and so happy, and so, so grateful. I wish you hadn't been in love with, what was her name? Mildred. Because if she hadn't treated you so abominably, it wouldn't have taken you so long to understand how I feel. I saw you. I wasn't very quick. Let's go out and play. Not until you pass that exam. Tell me, darling, what, what do you get out of this? You'll never know. I'm afraid you don't get much fun with me. I wish... If only I could take you dancing. I know how you love it. Philip, it's very silly of you to be so sensitive about your foot. You know, other people don't think about it nearly as much as you do. They notice it when they first see you, and after that they forget all about it. You know, I only speak of it because I love you. And I don't want it to make you unhappy. Now, will you please stay here and go on cramming for that exam? There's a lady to see you, sir. Oh, is there? Yes. Yeah. I shouldn't have let her in, but she was that upset. I just... Nora! What do you want? I didn't think I'd ever see you again. What's the matter? He's left me. Emil. Oh, well, has he? Yes. I'm going to have a baby. Well, why don't you sit down? I suppose you want him back. He'll never come back. Why not? He just won't, that's all. If you're his wife, he has to provide for you. He won't give me anything.
And even if he did, I wouldn't take it. Why not? Hedda, what's happened? I've still got me pride. That's something, isn't it? You got any money? No. Well, you better get yourself a place to live. After that, we'll see what can be done. Oh, Philip, you're always so good to me. That's why I knew I could come to you. Now, look here, Mr. Miller. I'd like to know what you intend to do about Mildred. I? What you expect me to do? Well, I expect you to take care of her. You married her, you know. I? I married Mildred? Ah! I married the... Uh, Stephen one. Well, all the same, I'd still like to know what you intend to do about it. Me? I can do nothing. One man cannot solution the problem of the unmarried mother. <coughs> Why didn't you tell me? I just couldn't. Well, brace up. Everything will be all right. still like me? Really? Strange as it may seem, I always have. I suppose I always shall. I did everything I could to make you love me. I thought you were incapable of loving anybody. It seems horrible to think that you were willing to sacrifice everything for that man. I'm awfully sorry, Philip. I shall never forget you wanted to marry me. Philip. Yes? You've been so nice to me. I'll do anything you want. Will you? Why? Why, I owe it to you. Oh, do you? You're not angry? No. Then will you stay and have some dinner? Yes, if you want me to. Of course, Philip. Nothing could delight me more. Just a moment and I'll have everything ready. How did you happen to come? Just passing by. I wanted to rub my nose against your door. Philip, why haven't I heard from you? I was just going to write. Why haven't you come to see me? Well, I, I've been busy. Why so silent? Well, you see, Nora, I've got something strange to tell you. You've been so good to me, it only makes it harder. Philip, what's wrong? 
I'm sorry. It, it, it's just over. You mean you don't care for me anymore? I'm afraid so. What have I done? Nothing. You've been wonderful to me. It's just that I... Of course, I kn knew you never loved me as much as I love you. Yes, I'm afraid that's usually the case. There's usually one who loves and one who is loved. Oh, it's always the same. If you want a man to be nice to you, you have to be rotten to him. If you treat a man honestly, you... Philip, there's someone else. Yes. Who is she? Mildred. She's come back. After all she's done. How could you? That's what I'd like to know. Just as though you were bound to her in some way. Yes. As I am to you. As she was to Miller. As every human being is, to something or other. Funny looking little thing, isn't it? I can't believe it's mine. Now, if you'll excuse me. So glad it's over, darling. You've been so good to me, Philip. From now on, things will be different. Now you will take good care of her, won't you? That I will, Mum. Good day. Good day. I know you don't like it. I can't do anything else if I'm going to work. No, I suppose not. But be sure and go over on Sundays and see the baby's properly taken care of. I will. What are we going to do this afternoon? Uh, I asked Griffiths to come over. Oh, did you? Why? Well, I know you find him amusing and I... I'm always afraid of boring you. Hello, hello, hello. Sorry I'm late. Had to get rid of a girl. Why didn't you bring her along? Oh, I'm not interested in my girl. I'm only interested in other men's girls. Do you like me? <laughs> really, I'm too hungry to know. But I think I like you lots. I'd like you a lot more if you got him to take us out to dinner tonight. And if you do, I'll tell you some funny stories. And you'll laugh and think you're having a wonderful time. What'll he do? Oh, pay the bill. What's that bill? Your missus? I'm sorry, I thought it was your sister. <laughs> Just a moment. Are you in love with Mildred? Uh, I? <laughs> so that's what you've been so funny about, huh? Why, my dear old no, no, boy, look here. I... It doesn't matter to you, Harry. You've got so many women. Don't take Mildred away from me. But my dear old boy, she's nothing to me at all. Nothing at all. 
thinking about. You were having quite a flirtation with Griffiths last night. Yes, I was, wasn't I? As a matter of fact, well, I'm sort of in love with him. <laughs> oh, I'm not surprised. Why, what do you mean? Well, Griffiths is good looking, he's amusing, he says the kind of things that make you laugh. I'll thank you not to make fun of me. You're a bit too superior for me, my fine young friend. Oh, good heavens, Mildred, I wasn't making fun of you. Well, you certainly don't act a bit serious. Well, I don't think it is. Oh, you don't, eh? Why not? Because Griffiths isn't in love with you. How do you know? I asked him. Would you like to read a letter I got from him this morning? I've been up all night thinking about you. And I've just sent for a special messenger who will take this to you in the dawn. You've no notion of the time I had with, with your friend last night. He kept asking me if I love you, and of course, what could I say? He'll doubtless tell you all this, so I'm making sure that you... Well, I can't help it if I love him, can I? No, I suppose not, but... Then what's you going on about? Nothing. Only I was fool enough to think that you cared for me. I do, Philip. As a friend. Not in any other way. But you do care for Griffiths in the other way. But you're you're rather cold. That that sort of thing doesn't mean anything to you. That's what you think. There's no use going on about it, Philip. Said yourself I couldn't help it if I'm in love with him. Well, if there's anything else to be said, say it. That's a nice dress you have on, Mildred. I couldn't afford it, but I paid for it. You have a nice apartment. I couldn't afford it, but I paid for it. If you're a gentleman, you think you'd throw what you've done for me in the face? Do you think it matters to me whether I'm a gentleman or not? If I were a gentleman, you don't suppose I'd care for a cheap, vulgar little... I'm sorry, Philip. I didn't want to end this way. Harry's waiting for me. What do you intend to do? We're going to Paris. Get out. Get out! I've moved three times, and each time this woman's hounded me down. I, I don't like to do this, but all right, sir, I'll move on. Come on, young lady. <laughs> Can't stay here. Come on now. Mildred and I are all washed up. That's and too bad. 
you'll excuse me, I'm due in the ward. Interesting, Carrie. I was just thinking what an unusual name you have. It's a very old Yorkshire name. Once took a day's riding across our estates. And here I am in a charity hospital because my father loved fast women and slow horses. How the mighty are fallen. Hello! Hello, Father. Carrie, this is my daughter, christened Maria del Sol. Her mother always called her Sally. This young man is a student here. He's been very nice to me. And with some inducement, he might be nice to you. Now, Father, Father's particular genius is saying the wrong thing. <laughs> he thinks it's fun to embarrass me. It is. <laughs> Why don't you try it sometime, Carrie? I will, if I get the chance. You shall have it. You're coming to see us the first Sunday I'm home. Oh, yes, please do. <laughs> what a quaint house. Yes, it is, but it's not very sanitary. Sanitation be hanged. Give me art. I've got nine children and they thrive on bad drains. Look at that now. I am, with great admiration. Shall I bring the ale, Father? Right, my girl. The sooner the better. I hope you didn't have the table in here on my account. I'd have been quite happy to have had dinner with Mrs. Athelney and the children. Oh, no. I always take meals by myself. I like these antique customs. I don't think women ought to sit down at table with men. <laughs> oh, don't you? Why not? It ruins conversation. But I'm sure it's very bad for them. Puts ideas in their heads. And women are never at ease with themselves when they have ideas. You sound like the voice of old England. I am, sir. And it's this fine old Yorkshire pudding that gives me strength to carry on. Now, stop getting up and down like a jumping jack every time she comes into the room. She doesn't want you to make a fuss about her, do you, Sally? And she won't get rude if you sit still while she waits on you. She don't care to hang for chivalry, do you, Sally? No, Father. You speak quietly while I eat the young man so boldly. Yes, Father. You know what I'm talking about, Sally? How could I, darling? You're so clever. Don't stand behind my chair in order to make eyes at him. Better get Philip some more ale. Ah. Ah. My word, is there anything better than English ale? <laughs> Let us thank God for simple pleasures. A good appetite, roast beef and beer. I was married to a lady once. Never marry a lady, my boy. Oh, really? Why? Because a lady has a point of view, a personality, and an individuality. All to double you with. Hang it all, you want a wife who can cook your dinner and look after your children. Don't you think so, Sally? Father, I think you talked the hind leg off a donkey. Well, it's clean fun. Now, Sally, wait on me, I'll wait on you. Take my chair here. While I fetch you and the young man some cheese. Thank you, Father. Well, what do you think of us? You don't know what this means to me. You see, I, I, I practically never had any family. And this is almost the only place I've ever known that's had the quality of... of home. Don't you think we're a little queer? <laughs> Everyone's queer but me and thee. And sometimes thee is a little queer. Hmm. Well, thank you, Father. It's no use mooning over, Carrie. Sally never kisses a gentleman until he's been here twice. You must ask me again sometime. 
Do it yourself. Why don't you come next Sunday? Will you? No. Why not? It's too late. You're a child. I'm 20. Let's talk it over when you're 30. Did you hear what I said, old man? Yes, I heard. Sorry if I brought up a painful subject, only I thought you'd be interested to hear about Mildred. Sorry she's had such a bad time. I gave her all I could, but you know me, always stony broke. I thought perhaps you'd want to... Uh... I can't do anything. Got another cigarette? No. I don't blame you. I wouldn't have told you, only she asked me to give you her address. Gave you a bit of a jolt, I can tell you, seeing her lugging that baby around and asking for something to eat. She has the baby with her? Yes. It's not difficult to imagine her next step. Baby, all right? I'm very grateful to you, Philip. If I could afford it, I'd given you a place of your own. As it is, you're welcome to my room. I don't know what will become of me and... and baby. You hadn't taken us in. Oh, you'd have got on, I expect. You've always been much nicer to me than I deserved. I'm beginning to realize how silly I've been. Well, you couldn't help how you felt. Let's not talk about it, shall we? I don't feel like that now. Look here, Mildred. Let's have no misunderstanding about this. The reason you're here is because... I know. Because you once liked me enough to want to marry me. Yes. Well, at least I can cook for you and keep your flat clean. Maybe someday you'll... He'll feel better about me, and things will be like they used to be. Oh, thanks. I'll smoke it later. Well, uh, good night. Good night.
Anne Luddy came upstairs a little while ago. She said, Mrs. Carey, she said, how can you stand it? Well, what's the matter with them? They're indecent. Disgusting, I calls it. They have drawings of naked people about. If you want to know what I think, I've half a mind to take them down myself. You do nothing of the kind. I, I love those pictures, Mildred. I love them for what they were meant to be. used to love me? Oh, I don't know. I was disappointed so often and hurt so much. Besides, what difference does it make anyway? Nothing, only... Remember how you got when I was so cold to you? Getting me that way. But you're so cold to me. No one else is, though. Where were you? Apple is. What are you doing up? I couldn't sleep. Hadn't you better put on something warmer? Oh, I'll be all right. Just let me stay here. Phil. Phil, I love you so. Oh, nonsense. It isn't. I can't live without you. Please get up. You're making a fool of yourself and a fool of me. Oh, Phil, please. I can't go on like this. Nonsense, you haven't anywhere to go. Stay here as long as you like. But with the definite understanding... You disgust me. Me? I disgust you! You. You! You're too fine. You won't have none of me, but you'll sit here all night looking at your naked females. Mildred. You cared, you dirty swine. I never cared for you, not once. I was always making a fool of you. You bored me stiff, I hated you. It made me sick when I had to let you kiss me. I only did it because you begged me. You hounded me, you drove me crazy. And after you kissed me, I always used to wipe my mouth. Wipe my mouth. But I made up for it. For every kiss I had a laugh. <laughs> we laughed at you. Miller and me and Griffiths and me. We laughed at you. Because you were such a mug, a mug, a mug. <laughs> you 
know what you are. You give me leg monster. You're a cripple, a cripple, a cripple. You love these things. You love what they were meant to be. Well, here. What they were meant to be. You're leaving? Why? My money's gone. What do you intend to do? Oh, anything. Before you go out into the world, don't you think we ought to try and do something about that foot? Think it'll do any good? I'll know better tomorrow. How are you, Philip? I'm all right, Sally. How's the foot? Well, let's try, shall we? All right. Careful now. Why haven't you been to see us? Why, well, I don't know. I've, I've had things to do. Well, you've, you've been putting on weight. I'm sure you haven't. Why do you say that? The way you look. Oh, that's only my look. I'm afraid it's more than that. I sent you a note last Sunday, and when you didn't answer, I went round to your room. Your landlady said she had to put you out. Hello, Philip. My dear fellow, by peer age signal, my daughter just communicated to me confirmation of our suspicions. As you know, I've been on the beach most of my life. In fact, in Tahiti, I was president of the Beach Comers Union. And as such, I should like to inquire into your amateur standing. Where have you been staying? Oh, 
Anywhere. Why didn't you come here? False modesty, I suppose. Now stop being an Englishman. When a man's on his opposite time, he came down to earth. We want you here with us. Well, I... Thanks very much, but I... Don't talk trash. You ought to stay here until you get your bearings. And I want no more fine talk about it. It's all arranged. Well... Well, here goes my amateur standing. I, I really have no place to go. It's awfully good of you. Nonsense! As you know, the house is completely unsanitary. You'll probably wind up with some foul disease. Now, let him alone, Father. I want to talk to him. Well, I suppose youth must be served, but I must say I'm sick and tired of serving it. Nine of them! Will that do? Looks as if it might. Wouldn't be a very nice night to be out. Not very, no. It's going to be jolly having you here. I hope I shan't have to stay very long. You do? Why? I can't go on like this, you know. I need a job. That's right, Father and I discussed that. There isn't much you've overlooked. I have to stow that on, too. And Father has a job for you. Has he where? Where he works. in the window. Well, whenever thought you'd come to that. <coughs> You're very hoarse. <coughs> so it's all. You haven't forgotten your doctor, have you? No. Because that's what I want to see you about. And I go to a doctor. Well, there's a free hospital. I have all them students staring at me. <coughs> what seems to be the trouble? Well, <coughs> I cough all the time. <coughs> Let's have a look at your throat. lungs, is it? Where's the baby? She died. Last summer. Oh. You might say you're sorry. I'm not. I'm very glad. I'm afraid I can't help you much. Don't leave me, Philip. I know I've proved you shocking. But don't leave me. Not yet, please. There's no one I can go to. You're the only one that ever trusted me, I promise you. When you're a gentleman, Philip. The only one I've ever met. <coughs> and things you need.
our last day. My Sally, darling. I was so determined not to let you see. Well, that's sweet of you to care because I'm going away. I suppose I'm a fool to care, but it doesn't mean you have to do anything about it. You can't help it just because someone loves you and you don't love back. Sally, look at me. Darling, do you think you'll always feel like this about me? Yes. I've, I've known it since the first time you came to our house. I thought at first that, that I meant something to you, too. Oh, but you did. You do. When I come back, if you still feel the same, will you marry me, darling? Don't you mean if you still feel the same? Well, this is what you might call the irony of fate. Come on now, be quick. Get her out of here. I don't want the likes of her on the end. I understand there's an interesting case. Look here, old man. Don't go in there. Why not? If you please. It's no use. You're not. I'm not going. What's that? My wedding present to my wife. When do you intend to marry me? Right away. Thank you, Philip. I beg your pardon. You don't seem very pleased. Well, I am, and I'm not. Why? I'm afraid it's only a noble gesture. That's not enough for marriage. No, no, Sally. It isn't just that. Philip, I like you far too much to, to ever stand in your way. <laughs> Suddenly, suddenly there's nowhere to go. Thanks, Miss Anne. No thanks, no. I had to be free to realize that. I had to be free to understand that all those years that I dreamed of escape, it was because I was limping through life. Taxi, sir? No, thank you. And because I was bound up with a person who was incredible to me. But that's all over. I'm not limping anymore. My life's all right. And why don't you go? Because everything that's beautiful to me is, is right here. Won't you please marry me, Sally? If you like. But don't you want to? Well, there's no one else I'd marry. How about a taxi, sir? What? How about a taxi? Yes. 